is going on you guys what is going on welcome to kitchen table talk live with spiller boy tv i am spiller boy tv and look it is the weekend it is the weekend let me get on here with you all what's up it's the weekend and it's good to see you all what's going on i got some things i got some things i got some things that i just want to kind of touch on. And I really just wanted to actually touch base with you all today. Um, I didn't have like a whole show rollout, but you all know sometimes at my kitchen table, I don't really need a whole show rollout. Roll I just feel like doing me sometime and I'll just click the button and come on down here and do me because it is my kitchen table. But in the midst of all of that, you say I've been gone so long, I was able to catch you <laughs> <laughs> Listen, so like I said, I just came, I really wanted to just chit chat with y'all, really, just to see what y'all were doing, see what y'all had going on for the weekend, that kind of thing, what I've been missing other than you all, that kind of thing. Um, in the midst of it, I ran into a couple things. It's Today is February the 2nd, February the 2nd, which means it is the second day of Black History Month. Second day of Black History Month. So um, can't kind of just like breeze on by. It is what it is. You know, I'm I'm all about it, baby. I'm all about this melanin that I sit in. I'm all about it, honey. Black, blackity black. I'm one of the blackest of the black that you'll see down here on the YouTube streets, rolling around and rummaging around I'm very much that and proud to be that. So I ain't going to harp on it too, too much today. But happy Black History Month to you all. Yes, I've been posting. Hey, ODS, welcome. That's the official D spot. You've been posting about Black History Month too, ODS? Let's see. I even had a moment on my mukbang. Y'all go check out ODS. And his mukbang. OD, it's so funny. Um, ODS, we've been in these streets running and doing, you know, we've been doing the YouTube thing and what the YouTube thing does. But I've been noticing that ODS is actually, his his uh, content seems to be getting back to what he used to do when I first started following him. And it's kind of funny because I've been kind of moving the same way. I've um, been going back to these things that I used to do that I used to enjoy. And I had said it at the top of the year that I was literally going to be diving into what it is that Spiller Boy TV is. I got a lot of new subscribers who really don't know. You know, they've seen some videos, they've heard some things and they, you know, they hanging out with me on what they've actually seen new but trust me, if you see my old stuff, baby, I am a good time. Do you understand? 
I'm a good time. Don't let nobody tell you nothing different, baby. I could be the life of the party. I have a good time. So if you're new to my channel and you've been having a good time, just keep on hanging out. I promise you, baby, I'm getting ready to go back into some of these corners that I hang out in. And trust me when I tell you, oh, yes, the life of the party. So if you've been having a good time thus far, keep hanging out. Keep hanging out. But yeah, I've been watching you, ODS. You don't always have my eye on you. So yeah, he does mukbangs and I see he added in some ASMR stuff and stuff like that. So definitely give him a click and a view and give him a click. Click that like button. That'll do too, honey. Get, get into it, honey. So a good time, a good time. But along with the whole Black history thing, just be proud. That's it. I, I don't really even have no whole whole bunch to say about it. You know, do I, I do a lot with reality shows. And with reality shows, there's always this nasty over and undertone of colorism. We need to work on it. We need to work on it. It just is what it is. It's not ever going to go away. It's not ever going to go away. And it's just not. And you know what? While I'm there, let me just go there. Because we're here. We have to cut the table. Let me go there. Okay, so I was actually watching a program. I was watching, actually, it was uh, TGIF. Watching TGIF. And also, you all know that TGIF has actually been doing, uh, they've been exchanging members since Funky Dineva has actually given up his seat. He was not fired or any of that stupid stuff you heard. I did videos on all of that. If you want to research that, you can go back to that. He was not fired. Um, Aesthetics Guru, thank you so much, baby. Yes, you know I love, in the past, you know I love to play with my backdrops. I've been shopping and 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 playing in some backdrop. Listen, we're going to re-ramp this thing. We're going to walk backwards. You know, we don't do no backpedaling and pussy popping, but we will walk backwards, walk backwards in a fashionable style and do some of the things that we used to enjoy. We did, I played a lot with like backdrops and stuff like that whenever um, we were in the house on pandemic. Well, we're not in the house, but that don't mean I can't act like I did when I was stuck in the house. So um, thank you, Aesthetics Guru. And listen, he's an OG. So he's one of my OGs that follows me. So I definitely pay attention and I hear you what you say. And if you say you hated it, I ripped that shit off the wall. <laughs> so, all right. Monk Chip. Hey, baby, another OG. I got, there's a bunch of them over people that have been with me since 2014, 2015. Trust me. If you're new, like I said, if you're new here, hey, Mocha Honest, if you're new here and you've been having a good time, I promise you, I promise you, if you think I'm groovy now, wait till I get started, baby. I'm the life of a part of the... Just keep watching. Anyway, but I was watching TGIF. They've been switching people. So they've had my my love dustin ross on child you know when dustin was on child just was all i love dustin y'all know that i love 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 dustin ross so he don't do no wrong in my book dustin was amazing in his week on the show they've had flame monroe i love flame and i am actually a fan of flames from way back um all the stuff that y'all see about flame that's not the stuff that i'm a fan of I was a fan of Flame, the entertainer. That's when I fell in love with Flame. I love her jokes and all of that. Her political views and things, eh, not so much, but who cares? I am in love with the talent, Flame Monroe. She was okay on the show. I didn't feel like it was such a great fit. It was just okay. Um, I didn't feel it was a great fit, but it was all right. She was okay. Dustin was amazing. Um, Quad was on for this past week. Um, she's been on. You all know I love Quad. It was off to a slow start. 
being honest, the first episode, I literally fell asleep. I ain't gonna tell you a lie. It could have been could have been me, but I fell asleep on the first episode. I was like, okay, it wasn't that it was so much bad, but it didn't draw me in and give me what I wanted. But by Wednesday, they actually jailed. They jailed and it took a different route. It took a different route. Hey, Kimmy, it took a different route. It, it didn't feel like the regular TGIF. It felt like a TGIF that was kind of elevated. So it was when you put together Claudia, Quad, and Al, it was very much, it got very adult-like. And it got more, but that ain't really what I go to TGIF for. But again, times change, things change. And again, it's going to be like this with them switching hosts. So I think, I, I think that it, it was a wise choice that they did because one thing, to try to replace Funky Dineva, you're never going to do it. You're never going to do it. It's never going to happen. And the reason is there's only one Funky Dineva, period. Period. Funky Dineva have a hard enough time keeping up with Hunky, Funky Dineva, okay? So Q can't be Funky Dineva Ross and can't nobody else be Funky Dineva Ross. That's just the way it is. So I think this whole thing is pretty smart. I think it's pretty smart. Um, I have not, but I will be. Yeah, I, I definitely, I don't know. Did it start already? Did it already start? Because I, I had intentions on watching. I got to go back and check. I hope I didn't miss the start. I had to go check. I told you I done fell out of practice with some of my stuff. Okay, I have to go. I got to go get caught up because I I thoroughly intended to be on that and to review that. Anyway, so like I was saying, I'm, we freestyling, y'all. I got some stuff, but we freestyling. Anyway, I was over there. I'm talking about colorism. There was some stuff that came up about colorism. So they were talking about Real Housewives of Potomac. Okay. Yeah, y'all pretty much have lost me with Real Housewives of Potomac, and I ain't been doing no marriage to medicine. My my reality shows are suffering right now. They're suffering right now, and I I, I thoroughly intend to pick up and and get back in the race because that's what I do. You never you could go out and venture, but you always come back home. Reality shows and reviews is what I do. It's what I started. Here, I started this channel doing that. So, will I ever really give it up? Probably not. But it is suffering. It's suffering. It's getting to be a bit much at times. But anyway, speaking of Real Housewives of Potomac, there's always been the under and the overtone of racism and the light skinned girls versus the dark skinned girls and that whole thing really bad on Real Housewives of Potomac. They, they really take a hit with it. So they had actually talked about that. And there was a point that someone made. It was Al. It was Al Reynolds. Al Reynolds said, because Giselle Bryant was being accused of this whole colorism thing as pertained to Candace. She said she didn't want to film, I film a ride in a sprinter. I think it was riding a sprinter with Candace and Wendy Osefo. And it's given this whole big old colorism thing. And people were jumping on that. They're, they're jumping in there and it's, you know, it's, it's what it is. It's fine. It's fine. We know it exists. We know that we're going to have to deal with it with this show. We've always dealt with it with this show, especially as reviewers. Child, they get in them comments and they get to fighting and they be fighting us about it and whatever, whatever. But Al said something that stuck out to me. And he said, we know you're not colorist, Giselle, because we know you got three beautiful brown daughters. 
Yeah, she do. And they are. They are drop dead gorgeous. Yes, they are. All three of them. The twins and Grace. Beautiful girls. And they are brown girls. Al, what in the fuck are you talking about? What are you talking about? Who told you that fair-skinned women and men who birth and create darker skinned children aren't colorists. Have you lost your mind? And it just, I was like, is he? And I'm not calling, and listen, I'm not calling Giselle colorist. I ain't even going there. That comment is what made me say, wait a minute. Like that, that it didn't mean anything. Like that argument didn't mean anything. That's why you will always see me and I'll say, you know, I'm a YouTuber, okay? I'm a YouTuber. And from time to time, YouTubers get into tips. Sometimes we have a fisticuffs. Sometimes we have an old nasty piece of, okay? And I tell my people, I've been here for a long time. So like, Don't you let me see you somewhere in a chat or somewhere fighting nobody about me let me fight because stupid stuff like what al said will have you looking a fool in the fight you got somebody now he over there thinking he fighting for giselle or giving giselle a one up you ain't helped giselle with that stupidness that was <laughs> i said baby i sat over there i said well, I'll be damned. I said, now this was the week that they should have called me to come over there and be a guest. Because I like you and all that stuff, Al. But baby, I would have lit you on fire. Because that was just damn stupid. Oh, we know you're not colorist because you have three beautiful daughters that are brown. Uh, hey, Al, so did the slave master. The slave master had a whole bunch of brown daughters. Do you think that made them treat them any better? No. No. Welcome to Black History Month. That is not how colorism works. That's not how colorism works, poor Al. And I think Al is like, like he's an intellectual. I think he's a very smart man. I think he's clueless when it comes to certain things. Obviously, not colorism. A little clueless. Um, gay. Ooh. You need a class. I think you're, you're gay. You're gay is a little off. You know, I, I know you got the, uh -uh and the uh -uh, I, you got all that. You got all that down, but baby, when it comes to you talking about LGBTQIA stuff, that's not the political stuff. Little out of touch, little out of touch. So yeah, I was like, oh, this should have been a week where they had me on, baby, because he that thing just moved me. It moved me to core, setting in my Jill Scott voice. Setting, I feel like. All right, so. That just bothered me, so I had to bring it up. And again, colorism is really, it is deep. It is layered. It is a whole lot of a whole lot of. And it, it's not as simple as, oh, I had a brown kid, so now I'm not colorist. Because let me tell you, and sometimes it'll jump out. I'm going to tell you all a little story. So, and then we're going to move on from this because I don't, you know, because we can really go into this and we don't want to touch nothing else. We can go right here and be here for a long ass time. Okay. But I spent a lot of time with a person who I was close with this person. I'm actually related to him. I'm related to the person. And I never paid attention to the the overtone or the undertone of the colorism in this person. I've known this person my 
whole entire life. I, I've never, you know, at home, I never dealt with this. Listen, let me tell you, my grandmother had three children, okay? Three children, two girls and one boy. The first one, she's the oldest. It's my auntie. My auntie is what you would call a red bone, okay? Red bone. Red bone. That's my auntie. Freckles, gray eyes, okay? Red hair, natural red hair. That's my auntie. My uncle came next. My uncle, black, blackly black, just like my grandma, okay? My mother, brown. Dark, she, she darker hue, but brown, okay? So we got all of it right from my grandmother, right from out of her lap. So in my house, that ain't nobody... We ain't deal with no mess like that. My aunt was just my aunt. And any type of foolishness she had going on ain't have a goddamn thing to do with the fact that she was lighter than everybody else in the house. Because see, over at another house, in the family, close family, same thing. Same thing. My god sisters and brothers, they're actually my cousins, okay? They're actually my cousins. My godmother is my grandmother's first cousin. She has one red bone daughter that has the freckles and the damn red hair. And she got a brown boy and a brown girl. That That's just my family. That's what it looked like. That's what we get. That's what we get. We got some browns, some gorgeous, gorgeous browns, and we got some gorgeous red bones. That's 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 us. And you can go through the houses and you see. I don't know nothing about that foolishness. That just didn't happen. That didn't happen. Now I got you know I, I have other stories of other shit that happened. They ain't had no business happening. You know when people was calling names that ain't had no business. Child, cause listen. What no shortage of folks calling me an old nasty piece of faggot, honey. So, you know, everybody ain't always talk nice. You know what I mean? Let's just be real. But colorism, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. stomp down groan when I ran into it and it knocked me off my feet. I had heard this other person in my family make reference to her own children before. And she said, you know, oh, I'll be so glad when it when we get past the summertime so my son could go back to his regular color. And I, you know, I don't pay her no attention. I, I, I paid it no mind. Paid it no mind and, and went right on. Never paid it no mind. Like, and you know, with me, things happen, and sometimes it don't affect me right away. If it ain't really toward me, I'd be like, what? I'd be minding my business. So that didn't have nothing to do with me at all. You know, when it came back to me, one day, me and this same cousin of mine, and of course, she's lighter. She's lighter. She read. She read about me. She said something. And I, I made reference to something about, because my, you all know the whole thing with my adopted children. They look exactly alike, but one is red and one is brown. That, But they look exactly alike. They look exactly like their mother, but one is red bone and one is brown. And I made reference to the oldest one and him being, you know, be, being is us being dark or something, something about our shade, but not even a colorist thing. And this is when I it, it flooded back. Like I was like, wait a minute. When I say we actually got into a literal heated exchange, 
it like got heated and I was like, what, what's going on? Because she literally was like, he is not as dark as you. Uh, he very much is. But I, remember I told you, it don't really bother me until it really has to do with me. Just wait, hold it, hold it. He not as dark as you. And it wasn't no real big thing. Like, I'm like, yeah, he is. I mean, it's, what about it? Yeah, he is. I've been dressing him since he's 18 months old. Yeah, he is. I know, because I picked the shades that he wear and all that. I know what works. I ain't going to put that, the the the, the light skin, I'm not going to put him in no lime green and wash him out. We're going to find a shade of blue that they both going to wear and be cute as hell and keep it moving. And then I'm going to put it on too, you know. And I didn't realize how we had switched over and the conversation, it was like it had got really heated on the one side and I was like, are you feeling okay? And it went into this thing and that's when it literally clicked. And I said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I have heard you in the past say different things about this thing, that thing, that thing, that thing. And all, not nobody on the outside, about our own people, our own people, something that you pushed off your own lap. And you made that, that, and I don't know, I, well, I probably would never have that conversation with her now, but I don't know if she even would consider, probably not, no, her, she probably wouldn't consider herself colorist. But those statements were very colorist. I can't wait till the season change so that this child of mine could go back to his regular color because, of course, you know, we tan. Even when you're dark, you tan in the summer because we're out in the sun. Now, we don't tan like white folks, but I mean, we're darker in the summer when you hang out. I said, oh, so honestly, you know, and do I feel any different about my cousin? No, my cousin is my cousin. It is what it is. But that is the first time within my family that I could actually say that I was like, whoa, like I'm really being faced with like, this is like a whole colorist thing that actually has happened in my own family. And this has been only maybe, maybe 10, 10 years, 10 years ago. all this time. Like, I, I'm like, that's crazy. So when Al said what he said, it really did come flooding back. I was like, this is deep. Like, this this is crazy. Like, that that's stupid, Al. That just doesn't even... People can be colorists against their own children. And it don't even have to be, you know, so deep, dark, and malicious. It's just there. Because sometimes it's, I guess, what you would call covert colorism is what I would call it. It's like covert. It's not, you know, oh, well, I'm not going to give you a piece of candy because you're too dark. It, it's not that, but it'll be, you know, I'd be glad when these damn seasons show I'm tired of looking at your ass getting black as hell. That's colorist. That's colorist. You know? And 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 I say it's colors because it's not even like it's not there's nothing even go off of like you're not making a joke, you're not a comedian, so you're not making a joke, you know, you're not, you know. It was like it bothered you. It bothered you. I'm looking at my chat and y'all got quiet on me, like, oh, here we go. Yeah, there we went. I'm on my soapbox. But again, welcome to Black History Month. This is us. And if we can't look at us first, who are we going to look at? Now, let me just say this. In some other places that I, you know, I'll be around on these YouTube streets. I'll be around on the internet. Let me just say this to you all. Don't let nobody tell us about being us. You understand? I, I've been around too many places where I've seen people who are not us telling us how we supposed to be us. 
This is my message to you all for Black History Month. Don't you let nobody who ain't Black tell you how to be Black. Do you understand? Because nothing gripes my bottom so hard than the role somewhere on the internet, a newspaper, a conversation, or anywhere where I hear some non-Black person leading the charge about some Black issues. If you don't get somewhere and sit your ass all the way down, and what's worse is when you see some Black folks sitting. What are you sitting there like that for? If you don't get up and tell them to shut up, it just, it burns me. It burns me. And I have seen it. I have seen it. I have addressed it in real time. Excuse me. Shut up. You know? And sometimes you get, oh, he's a troublemaker. Well, I'm not trying to be a troublemaker. But if I'm going to be a troublemaker, I'm a black troublemaker. How about that? And if you don't shut up, Non-black leading the charge about colorism. I don't think so. I don't think so. Because if ever there was a time when someone was playing in your face, that's someone playing in your face. Now, are there non-black people who really, you know, don't really like the colorist thing, who are really against it? Allies. Allies. I have no problem with that. We, we, we love an ally, a true ally. But that's what you are. You're an ally. You can't lead the charge. You can't lead the charge for something that you're not. I can't lead the charge for women. I can't lead the charge for trans women. I can't lead the charge for a trans man. I can't lead the charge for a white man. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, shit, y'all don't like this type of thing. <laughs> we don't went there now. Damn, the, I'll have to get back to a Kiki and, and Keith Lee thing later. I'm in something here. But do you understand what I'm saying? Or am I just talking to be talking? Do you feel like I'm just talking at y'all just to be talking? Or is somebody actually understanding what I'm saying? Is there somebody who disagrees with what I'm saying? I have no problem with it. If you disagree with what I'm saying, I have no problem with that. I have no problem with that. But you, nobody who's not a part of it can't lead the charge. And it looks crazy, especially when you got Black people sitting, looking like bumps on a log, like, what? Have you lost your mind? It's not. Do you think I would actually allow for any of you, any of you, because I have a ton of heterosexuals who actually support and love my ass to pieces, and I love them back. They love me just like I am, and I love them just like they are. We respect each other, and we be rolling. But do you honestly believe that at any point I would allow your heterosexual ass to tell my homosexual ass about how I am homosexual? No, James, you shouldn't be homosexual like this. You should be homosexual like that. Do you honestly, how far do you think that conversation would carry you? before you ended up suffering an old nasty piece of homosexual dragon. I would never, I would never. If you're not it, you can't lead the charge. You can uplift the movement. You can support the movement, but you can't start it. And you can't be at the forefront of it. <laughs> you can't be at the front of it.
Now I said what I had to say about it. Period. Al Reynolds, I couldn't get with you with that one, baby. You were wrong. You were wrong, 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 wrong. Miss Giselle having a brown skinned daughter, three of them for that matter, does not stop her or shield her from being colorist. She could very much be colorist. Very much. So I think you should have just left that alone because you did not help your girlfriend. You didn't help her at all in that argument. You didn't help her. You ended up looking quite foolish to me. And um, I hate to have to even say that to you because I, I like you and all. But mm -mm. and the fact that you yourself are of lighter skin, it didn't help. <laughs> I just said, Charlie, you counting from three backwards as hell, honey. Three, two, one, three, two, one, three, two, one. I just just abort, abort the mission out. But anyway, so that's what happened over at TGIF. Let me get down off my soapbox. I'm getting down, but I'm boom, boom, bam, and I'm back. I am back. Um, yeah. So I, I, I wasn't planning on doing all that. Um, let me go on and I'm gonna get, we're going to get out of here before we hit this hour mark. Let me go on to uh, what I was actually going to talk about, which is actually pride and integrity still. Pride and integrity with us. Um, Keith Lee. Keith Lee. You all know who Keith Lee is. He actually does like videos where he actually uh, tastes food. And, you know, if you get the Keith Lee stamp, it could really kick your revenue up tremendously. He is a internet sensation. Um, things don't always go well, you know, when Keith Lee, because Keith Lee is very, very, he has integrity, okay? A whole bunch of it. Keith Lee will say it like he mean it and mean it like he say it. This is who he is. If you haven't, you might have seen him and don't know who he is, which I doubt, but this is Keith Lee. That's Keith Lee. Okay? So, he pop into your town, pop up at a restaurant, baby. He'll eat the food and he will review the food. And if it's good, it could really turn your business around. If it's bad, it could really shut your business down. <laughs> okay. So there's been some folks that, you know, they get mad at him and this, that thing. And then there's other people who just love him. And then he does other things. Like he get he does very nice things for some people. Sometimes he will actually go over and beyond. They don't, he just doesn't give it a stamp of approval. He will actually go there. Like he will drop a hell of a tip on the people, you know, like, really large tips and different things like that. He, he just he just is a blessing to some <laughs> nightmare to others. But the thing is, if he's a nightmare to you, it's not because he's trying to be nasty. It's time for you to step your cookies up. Literally. Step your cookies up. Honey. Stop using that cheap knockoff sugar and use Domino. It, it, that's, that's all there is to it. It's a wake-up call. Get your things together. Get it together. But he was in Texas and there was a girl who actually went live and she was doing like a TikTok dance and a little rap and trying to basically get his attention to come. And he ended up showing up at this food truck. And I don't have the food truck name because it went bad. So I don't really want to get a blaster like that. I just got to blast the whole situation. But food truck, he goes there. The food, he, he liked the food. So he gave her rave reviews on the food. You know, and the girl's little video, the TikTok girl, you know, she, or whatever, short or whatever she did. She did her little dancing and rapping and all that and got his attention. So he loved all that. He came there, found out that she was doing, they were doing braids. 
and they also were doing hair. I said, child, they a one-stop shop, baby. They doing everything. They over there braiding up the folks' hair, cutting folks' hair, and serving the food, too. I hope y'all got enough space where y'all ain't getting no hair and food. But anyway, so I say everything was okay because Keith said everything was okay. So what Keith did was what Keith does. Keith ends up dropping four grand. Now, he paid for the food. He paid for food for everybody because they said the food was like over 850 bucks worth of food that he paid for some for them to give away and all of this. But even with that, the woman who runs the food truck, she had actually been doing some, you know, talking about how, you know, how her struggle was and this, that thing and the other. And he had done his little research before he went on over there and he gave her a $2,000 tip. Now, in the video clip, in the video clip, and I'm not going to play the video clip. I don't really get into playing other people's video clips because I don't want no, pro I don't need no smoke over here on my channel. You want smoke? No, I don't want no smoke. So, listen, I'm a hell of a storyteller, so I can just tell you what I saw, and then you can go look for it. Okay? I want no smoke. So, <laughs> Keith gave her a $2,000 tip for herself. He told her, here is $1,000 for the, the, the guy doing the um, haircuts, to do free haircuts, and $1,000 for the late young lady doing braids to do some free braids. So they had him charge his card for four grand. Okay, they used the Square app. So there's a whole thing. They thought, oh, yeah, well, Square actually pays you the next day or whatever. Okay. However, else than ever. Keith goes on about his business. When I tell you shit went left, shit went left. I said, oh, my so close to black ass. Old girl that run the food truck. Now, this is. She got the last I seen. I don't know if there's been any updates. She got her two grand. She got the other two grand too. She ain't gave nobody nothing. They said that she literally did three other customers because remember they had like eight hundred and fifty something dollars worth of food to, to give away that he paid for. Said that she did three other customers and then they shut that down. The haircut situation ain't take place. The girl who was doing the braids is the actual same girl that did the video that actually caught his attention to come over there. Come to find out like all the people, like it just wasn't, everything wasn't what it seemed. The lady had one son and the people that Keith kind of thought was working for was like family. They weren't their family. They was friends of the, the, the brothers. But all in all, from what I gathered, a woman ended up, she got the four grand and she ain't giving nobody nothing. Now, if that ain't a bunch of mess, she ain't giving nobody nothing. I said, now, this is the type of stuff I can't get with it. I can't get with it. I can't get with it. No integrity. None, none. And then I seen her in a video and she's going on and she's trying to like twist it and reword it. And, uh, it then the thing that got me, which is why I came to y'all to talk about it. She said, if he were to, to reach out to me and tell me to give that money to those people, I would give it to him, um, ma'am, sweetie, dear. I watched the video myself. He was standing in front of you when he was handing you the card in the video, girl. And you go back because they re-ran it like three times in the video I saw. He said two thousand dollars a tip, a thousand dollars for the hair braider, and a thousand dollars for hair free haircuts. So where is it, ma'am, that that other two thousand dollars that you felt like it belonged to you? It ended up being a whole big mess. Then it got to be some stuff between the woman's son and the guy who was doing the haircuts because the guy that does the haircuts don't really live there. Like I said, he's the one girl's uh, brother and he lived out of town. 
and he had to go home and it just got to be a whole hot ghetto mess. I said it, ghetto mess. But at the end of the day, the lady with the food truck, four grand to the good, talk about if he said, if he said to give them the money, then I would. He already said, give them the money, ma'am. He already said, give them the money. So I don't know. I, I, I think and see when you say one one apple could actually ruin things for the whole bunch because can you imagine and I haven't heard Keith say anything I haven't heard Keith say anything so but can you imagine how he feels can you imagine how he feels you just out of the kindness of your heart gave away four thousand dollars. Four thousand, and somebody basically, I like, who who seen a scam coming? You know what I mean? Who seen a scam coming? How do you turn a scam into something that you 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 turn something into a scam that you didn't even put together? Now that's talent. I see y'all say they're gonna run her out of Texas. I, Curie says that he shouldn't have to say anything. That's horrible. Absolutely. And then I don't think that he would. Um, Keith being Keith, I don't. I don't think that he would actually like recall it. Because when it all started going down, just depending on how fast he got a wind of it, cancel the whole transaction. Cancel the whole trans. That would actually serve her correct. If he canceled the whole transaction, everything, food and all, and then pay her for the meal that he ate, send her a payment for the, the meal he ate, tell her invoice me, and go on. But that whole thing, I, I, I was appalled. I was appalled. That could mess with his brain as well as mess with her brain. I'm sure it messed with his feelings. My feelings was hurt. It wasn't even my four grand. Four thousand dollars. Listen, I my I well my feelings wasn't all that hurt because I don't be too surprised by some of the stuff that goes on. But I gave out six hundred dollars down here. That was my money as well as my followers' money, and a little contest that I did, and people went left and end up saying, not everybody, but somebody went left and said some despicable things about me, like free money. I gave you free money. They were mad that I didn't give them all the money, that I actually separated up the money to where everybody walked away with something. You came in here with nothing. You came in with nothing. I put my money in. My other people ended up matching me and it actually even went over what I had put in. And I had six people and I gave each of the six people a hundred dollars. Everybody walked away with something. I literally was attacked, was attacked because one person thought that they should have won the whole six hundred dollars. I said, isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? So and again, that was six hundred dollars. It wasn't even my full 600. A good portion of it was mine. But it was me and my people. And I know how I felt. Four grand out of my account? And this is what's going on? Yeah. I can imagine I would be hot as fish grease. Do you hear me? Hot as fish grease. Right, Mom Chip. That was on my little dance challenge. Yeah. A hot mess. A hot mess. I mean, I gave away, um, you know, I did a little thing for my members once and gave away a coach purse and got called a scammer. Somebody called me a scammer. Scam how? I ain't take no money. I didn't ask nobody for no money. All I did was people have memberships with me. I put it all on the wheel and spun the wheel in front of everybody. And what name came up? I sent them a coach purse. I get to be a scammer because people 
just are haters. And people will take and make something bad out of something that is totally intended to be good. Just ridiculous. Just absolutely ridiculous. But that's what happened with Keith Lee. Um, that bothered me as well. <laughs> it really did bother me. And um, it that had nothing to do with Black History Month. But the fact that it was my people acting like that, I, I was a little embarrassed, I have to say. I was a little embarrassed. And I said, look, we supposed to be celebrating, honey. We supposed to be sing, sing, celebrate. Four kings, celebrate. Sing, sing, celebrate. Y'all ready to fight. They was talking about pulling guns out on each other and stuff. I said, oh, Lord, you know, they're in Texas, baby. They, they allowed to carry. It had got hot, heated, and dangerous. All about the food truck lady and the four grand. And she already said she was having some problems, you know, that life was really beating her down and she's having some problems. Well, uh, dear, if you were already having problems, what do you think is getting ready to happen? Don't you know that karma is a black ball headed bitch? And she will get you. And she don't always take a long time to get you, honey. You... Miss, ma'am, do the right thing. Give the people the money that you were supposed to give them and go on, on about your business. But I don't, because if you keep this, I don't think you're going to have a business, but that's just my two cents at my kitchen table. It is my table, girl. Get over it, honey. But just a mess. Just a mess. And I got one last thing, and then we're going to get out of here. Thank y'all for hanging out. I know, listen, again, we all over the place. I got I got the little things I was going to talk about, but we really all over the place, and I'm all right with it. I hope you're all right with it. I hope you're all right with it. I'm going to cover this last little thing. I was running through the streets, okay? You know I love music. You know I love talented, talented singers, um, one of which is Miss Kiki Wyatt. Have you all seen Kiki Wyatt lately? Kiki, what happened? What happened? Why did you do this? And what's really going on? So did it make you... Wait, what are you saying here? So did it make you not want to to do any giveaway parties, James? Um, no, I've actually, after that happened, I've done quite a few more giveaways. Carrie, nobody will ever make, the, the purse thing, the purse thing happened way before. That was like over, that might be two years, going on two years ago that I did with the purse thing. So never would I ever allow anything that anyone does on YouTube or anywhere else, stop me from being the January 9th Capricorn that I am. I am a giver. I love gifting. I love surprises and I love surprising people. Um, I love all that, that type of stuff. So no matter how the haters, the trolls or whoever try to flip and turn what I do, I will always be me. I'm not never going to misuse you all or not do what I want to do for you all or with you all because of what somebody else does. And I know I get a lot of questions about me doing meet and greets and stuff like that. And I tell y'all, mm, I ain't feeling it right now because of the way things go. I'll never sit and tell you that I'll never do another meet and greet because I would be lying. I'll be lying. It just when I get inspired. But I'll never let anybody stop me from being me at all. And I am a giver. I am, didn't I just tell you at the beginning of this live that I could be the life of the party? How am I going to be the life of the party by myself? I can, but <laughs> it's more fun when you all play, play along too. So no, don't worry. We will do giveaways. We're going to do game nights. We're going to do all the things. All the things that Spiller Boy TV is, we're going to be doing them all. So just stay tuned. We're going to do trivia. We're going to do all of that. We're going to do all of that. When I feel like just jumping up and asking a question that might give away a cash app, I, I'm going to do it. So don't mess around and miss no live. Because you might mess around and miss a live and there something be given away. That's just me. That's how I am. That's what I do. That's what I enjoy. I like it. 
I like it like that. <laughs> okay? So don't worry. Don't worry. You support me and you come out and when I support me, I just come on and click. Click. Click and view. Remember, at the end of the day, don't let nobody make you believe nothing different. YouTube is free.99 cent. Free. <laughs> it's free. It's always been free. Everything else, memberships, donations, oh, they're all just that. Those are donations. You don't owe anyone anything. I'm going to do, if nobody ever gives me a cash app, if nobody ever gives me a super chat, if nobody ever sends me a card, I'm going to still do what I do. YouTube is free. It's free. Okay, so quickly, we got five minutes. Kiki Wyatt, have you all seen Kiki Wyatt lately? She made some decision that I said, whoa, Kiki. I said, wow. She was doing a show and baby girl popped up on stage and ba-doom, Kiki Wyatt. I said, well, check out Kiki. She shaved it all. She literally shaved it all off, all of it, all of it. And only a Kiki Wyatt, you know, Kiki, see Kiki, Kiki does what she does, but there's generally something attached to why Kiki's doing what she's doing. And I just didn't know, but I was so shocked to see it. And I think she looks amazing. I do. I think she looks amazing. I was like, girl, if she doesn't look like one of the women from the Black Panther series, she looks strong and and just just pretty. Just pretty. I mean, because again, all that hair and all that stuff, we know that Kiki could grow hair if she wants to. But when you take all of it off, there's nothing to hide behind. Nothing to hide behind, but exactly what your mama gave you. And I, I just see, I didn't know if you all had seen it, but I saw her and she did a performance and she just felt, it looked like she felt so free in her performance and she wasn't worried about stuff and she wasn't fiddling. And she even had on, a, it was a cute little pants. And a little sheer top with the little underneath part, cute little outfit. She had these cute uh, sandals on. She even had one of her ladies came out and and unstrapped the sandals off her. By the time she really got down into her set, Kiki was when I say singing barefoot. She's standing ten toes down, barefoot on the floor, ball headed as hell, and tearing the place down, tearing the place down. And I think that she just looks great. I really do. I think she looks great. I just don't know what, if I missed a part of the story as to why she did it. I know when I was watching her reality show, she was really playing in color a lot. So I wonder if she might have damaged it or something because she was really, really like red, red, like cherry cola, cherry cola red, which would really make you have to like bleach out into the blonde area to actually get your hair to lift up that red like what she had. It was like literally like, like a red Kool-Aid. You know what I mean? So I wonder if she damaged the hair and just said, forget it and just did it. Or did she just have one of those Kiki moments? Because, you know, they always say hair and energy, you know, there's a, a thing with hair and the energy that hair holds. Some people will literally shave their hair off. Uh, you see that a lot with people who wear dreads and stuff. Like they'll be growing them for years and years and years, and then they'll get rid of their dreads and say they would just want they needed new energy and they, you know, they get rid of it. I, I was just wondering if anybody had heard, was there an, a story behind it? Whatever the story is, not really all that important. I love it. Didn't she do this before? I think she has a child with cat. She does. Her, her son, but he actually he beat it. I, I didn't, um, he was cancer free last I checked and doing really, really well. So I hope that's not it. I hope he's not battling again. Um, yeah, please, if you hear anything, Earth Angel, if you do hear anything, let me know. 
I hope that baby's not battling again. But yeah, he was really tough and did a great job the first time around when he dealt. He was just, he was like, like just entering into his teens when that happened to him. Um, and you can see him, he had came along so, so much when he was on the show. I seen him on the show and I didn't see anything, but I didn't watch all the way to the end. Okay, I know last time she did it was for the reason, for that reason, but she definitely could just need a new start. Yeah, I know she was having some, there was some, she was having some, some, some mood things and some things going on and she had a whole new baby that had different medical difficulties. So maybe it was the energy thing. You know what I mean? It could have been the energy thing and she just wanted to, 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 to release herself of that or something like that. Cause you know, Kiki's deep like that. She is. She can be deep like that. As silly as she can be and as talented as she is, Kiki is, she, she's, there's layers to her. There's layers to her. But anyway, all in all, I think she looks absolutely great. I think she looks great. Anyway, so listen, that's all I got. It's not really all I have, but I'm going to leave this. We, we covered a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. Um, we don't went a, a, a lot of little places. Um, I didn't want to keep you too much longer than an hour. Um, listen, I'm glad y'all came down and y'all seen this. You all who are in the replay, because there's always my folks that are in the replay. I love you. Thank you so much. Leave me some comments and then we can continue this conversation in the replay. If you didn't get the chance to be here live and and chat with us about it, I will definitely still chat with you in the comments. So on that... That's all I got at this time. And I'm going to go on and I'm going to leave. And I'm going to tell y'all again, happy Black History Month. Remember what I said. Remember what I said. I hope you took something away from here. I didn't even intend to be giving you all of that like that. I didn't even know I had all that to give today. But yeah, I hope you take something away from here with you. And listen, I will catch you all next time on the flip side. This has been Kitchen Table Talk Live with Spiller Boy TV. I will catch y'all next time. Later. And, and, and feel like